welcome to another episode of the Evolution Channel. My name is Johan, and I'm here today with my colleague Robert in the central parts of Sweden. And today we have something very special. We have a heavy truck, electric truck, developed with Scania and Siemens. And uh, we're here with uh, two of the project leaders for this uh, e-highway project. And uh, perhaps I could start to, with, to ask you, um, Jan, um, can you tell us a little bit about this, this heavy truck? This is it's a hybrid, so it's not a pure electric, it's not a battery truck, uh, but it, it connects with a pantograph. Uh, to electric line above the truck, and we will see that in the in the video section later. But could you perhaps describe a short little bit about the truck, uh, how it works, and um, behind a little bit background on the project here in Sweden? Because you're actually the world leader. You're the number one. You're a f this is the first project uh, in the world where you connect, where you run this electric uh, electric truck together with uh, the electric power line. Uh, there are uh, pilot projects going on on a couple of other places in, in the world, but you're first with the conventional truck uh, on a real highway strip, actually. So it's up and running right now, and uh, a heavy truck can actually use it uh, on this two kilometer long uh, uh, strip on the highway. So perhaps you can just tell us a little bit about the truck and also a little bit about the project. I can start with you. We, we start off with the truck. Yep. Uh, it's a standard Scania hybridized platform. So it has an electric engine in the gearbox and a combustion engine. So it's Scania's standard platform, to be frank. Uh, very good, and it's modular, so you could add modules and take away modules. And uh, it means you could have an external power source. Um, and in our case, it's a pantograph. It's a connection device for the overhead uh, lines and cables. Uh, and uh, that combination is a way to uh, run the truck and charge the batteries in the truck uh, going uphill, flat and downhill, they go on battery. So that's the technology, existing technology uh, mixed in an innovative way. Uh, 700 volt plus mi minus uh, tram technology. So we combine existing tram, uh, spare parts, cheap devices, no development, pantograph, pretty new things, uh, Scania truck, standard platform in an innovative way and have brought them up to, to run on public public road. Mm. I, th I think it's an interesting idea if you think about uh, the triangle we call it, um, if you think about the three biggest cities in Sweden, if you could connect Gothenburg, Stockholm and Malmö in the future uh, along the, the biggest highways uh, in, in Sweden, you could actually um, enable a transition of, uh, away from fossil fuels within the heavy truck segment, uh, which is very interesting. Um, and if you're watching this from the US, you can go and see uh, a similar uh, strip outside uh, Long Beach in Los Angeles. So to see that it's actually real, it's actually out there. But in, in Sweden, uh, the, this is the first one, the conventional one, uh, which is up and running already. So uh, uh, I think that's a, it's, it's a great incentive. Uh, and also, I, know, I can also mention that Germany um, with uh, Chancellor um, Angela Merkel, uh, she was here in February and she signed a deal to, to initiate a collaboration with the Swedish state and Swedish government um, to exchange uh, ideas on this project uh, and we may see a lot of development in this area in the future. But um, could you tell us a little about uh, the truck? I mean, it's a, it's a hybrid and it's based on the Scania truck that you have today and it's an 18.5 kilowatt hour battery. So, uh, what's, what's your idea for the future? Do you think um, we can uh, develop this project uh, and see it? I mean, w if you would build it today, uh, with, if, you, if you had all the permits and you have a go, uh, I mean, could you build a stretch? For, I, I should say, for example, uh, the, the initial idea right now is that you could connect um, a major harbor in Sweden, uh, Jävlehamn, uh, with uh, yeah, a, a fairly small but uh, industrial city called Borlänge. So you can use the industrial, uh, I mean the traffic going from Borlänge to the harbor with a lot of uh, heavy freight. 
uh, and substitute that or use electricity on the electric line instead of just running on diesel. So uh, it will save costs on, on fuel, obviously, uh, but it will also mean, um, in terms of emissions, it will decrease um, substantially. So uh, there are a lot of positive things with this, uh, I think. Uh, but obviously, a lot of people are, are wondering, when can we see this uh, in a bigger scale? I mean, uh, do you have an idea about that? Do you think that it's, uh, that it's um, in the foreseeable future? Three, five years, or depending on, of course, the permits and everything. What, what do you think? Probably within three to five years, we'll see perhaps 40 kilometers, um, and that's not all the way to Borlänge or, or similar towns. But we need to. Uh, this first trial has been proving that it can be done uh, legally, practically, that it's safe technology for use in everyday traffic. Uh, we've proven that already, so now we have to look into the next step, and that is proving uh, the business concept and uh, sorting out who owns what, uh, what is the government's uh, demands for this project, what are the demands from the different stakeholders in the private sector that need to use this. And you really need to sort that out in, in a larger scale, uh, and I think we need to do that as the next step before we uh, we go all in and electrify the whole country of Sweden, because that is in our minds, of course, electrifying the whole country for uh, heavy traffic, not the entire country, but but stretches of road suitable for this uh, kind of traffic. Uh, and uh, before we do that, we have a few questions left in roles, who wants what, the regulations. We've done this today without changing an existing regulation. Now, that was just fine, but uh, we have to uh, look into the future. What regulation do we need, and what is the public part of this technology, and what is the private part, and how do all benefit from, from this in a larger scale? Uh, but when we've done that, I think it would be very, very fast building this. It would happen long before 2030, which is the target date, so to speak. Because uh, as far as we can see today, this is very good business. It's, uh, and the return on investment was within 10 years, you could actually you would, you would go positive. Uh, and, uh, we hope so, because, because it depends how you do it, and who owns what, and how you, how you do it. But, but, if, if you look at all the pieces in the puzzle, it looks as if it could give return on investment in maybe, in best case, seven, eight, nine years. Yeah. Uh, but that depends on how you do this sorting out and, and who owns what. Yeah. And, then, and it yeah. sounds like this is something that's really suitable to finance th through basically yeah. bonds. Magnus, you're, you're the representative from the region, yes. region here, Jadleborg. Yeah. And how, how come this is happening he here in Jadleborg? Uh, because we're interested in uh, new technologies, we're pretty good at procurability and, and the value chains and working with very complex value chains uh, concerning several, both public, private and other uh, parties in, in a societal, um, solving societal challenges, basically. Uh, and it's that as a base and that someone asked us. Uh, so we were approached by the uh, Skåne and Siemens that asked, do you want to take part in this project? Mm -hmm. Yes, possibly. Uh, we have to look into it. Is it a good idea? Could it carry its own costs? Maybe. Uh, if it doesn't, if it's just uh, the public sector taking all the costs and the private sector taking all the benefit, we're not interested. But we found a very good cooperation and a good level uh, in, in balancing the different stakeholders. So, yes, of course we're interested. And we're not interested in the technology. Uh, we're not interested in the business. We're interested in the effects of the technology put into use in everyday society. Uh, in in um, competitiveness for our industry, of course, an em environmental uh, question. You, you cut uh, carbon dioxide with 90 to 95 percent just using the hybrid truck yeah. that still has a diesel engine. Yeah. Um, 
So the effects for the society, if this is put in use in larger yeah. scale, that's what we're interested in. And I read that the efficiency is about 80%. I mean, you, of course, you're losing some when you're yes. doing the transfer of the electricity, but I mean, compared to an, an, an electric engine in 1995, but comparing to diesel, you know, best diesel possible, maybe, maybe it's 20-25%. So, I mean, that's a major improvement, all, I mean, only looking at that. But, okay, in terms of freight, is, this is a heavy truck. It can basically take any type of uh, tonnage. It, it's not, you know, limited to anything like that. So, uh, so it's a regular truck, yes. uh, basically. Yeah. We run with up to 60 tons, and, and coming in the future years, we'll probably run 74 tons, and that, that's uh, the... the highest load that we have in Sweden, in, and you have to have a special permit on special roads for the 74 ton trucks, but uh, we run the regular 60 ton trucks, that's no problem. And the 74 tons is not a problem with technology either. No. And the European standard is around four, 40? 40 tons is, is the regular standard in, in Europe. Mm. And uh, can you tell us anything about uh, how it's been received by the public? and the comp We were mentioning some of the companies I mean, the mining industry, I, I, I assume, or big in industry companies, I mean, using heavy freight on a daily basis. But in terms of public here in Sweden, and perhaps as well, uh, comparing to Germany, can you tell us anything about that? Well, it's been, been pretty well received. Uh, the first thing we said three or four years ago when we started this project is the major problem will be that people think that the poles are ugly. And that's still our major problem. Um, of course, we, we've had a lot of work with safety and, and other issues uh, trying to predict what could go wrong. We've had the fire brigade, the police, uh, this emergency dispatch, uh, the energy safety authorities and so on, in, in groups working with what could possibly go wrong. And nothing of that happened, but the polls are still ugly. <laughs> that, that's what people usually say. Yeah. And one thing that we often hear, but we think that it's a very positive uh, reaction, is that don't you run anything on that road? We never see this electric truck. Mm. And we usually ask, well, how often do you see the same truck every day otherwise? Yeah. Because you really don't pay attention. It's difficult to see. If you don't think about these pantographs going up, you won't see them. Yeah. So it's just another truck. And we think that's positive, because it, it really doesn't stand out in the traffic. No. But this is definitely, I mean, technology is up and coming, and it's uh, it's not far in the future. I think perhaps people passing by this strip here in Sweden, uh, it's only two kilometers long, and they, as you say, they don't see so many trucks, and they think that maybe this is just a pilot project among other pilot projects that may or may not happen. Uh, but if you look at uh, the stakeholders here, if you think about the Scania Siemens, this project, Merkel is now signing this deal early in the year, uh, there are other, many other stakeholders, major ones here in Sweden. Um, so, uh, yeah, if, if I think you should, I recommend people to look into this and expect something to happen. And, and also, I think uh, perhaps the more people uh, read about this and learn about it, they, they also can put some pressure on the politicians uh, and also to other companies that uh, raise the awareness about the technology. Because the technology is not rocket science. Uh, well, I'd say that it's uh, from the transport buyer's point of view, the interest had been very strong from yeah, the beginning, sorry, from the sorry. industry. Mm -hmm. From the uh, suppliers, Scania and, and uh, Siemens and so on, very strong. From the politicians, very strong. From the public, very strong. From the who is not supporting it. Yeah. Well, we have had a lot of politicians here, and they are, they're all happy. They all like to support it. So that's not really the issue. The issue is really to keep all the parties together and move forward in a proper speed. Yeah. So we keep the balance, private-public investments, so it's safe, and so it rolls out. So it's really managing the development. It's, we, don't, we don't have any obstacles that we have to blow up or solve or any people that do not like it. Yeah. It's really just managing the partnership yeah. moving forward in a proper way. That's what we do. If you would guess, I mean, this is just throwing out the question, but uh, do you think that the Germans will be first, or the Swedes? Can we be first with... We, we are first already, so I should say that. We're first with the, the strip, but going to a full scale or, a, you know, this strip between 
the harbor and, and uh, the city of Wallingen or something like that? Or do you think that a strip of Autobahn or something similar in Germany, if they, if, are, are they going? We'll see. We'll see. Okay. okay yeah. so Actually, we've never cared about being no, first. And no. I think that's why we are first, because yeah. we've always tried to keep this even pace with all the stakeholders. Yeah. And, and uh, there's a bit of different, different logic between traffic in the Nordic countries and Germany yeah. and the US of course yeah. so it's a bit different logic and I think you have to keep that different logic um, so we hope everyone will build this yeah. and if someone is ahead of us Fine. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I yeah. to <laughs> different types of ge geography, but the future sure certainly looks interesting. Yeah, we'll have to exchange, yeah. teach and learn between yeah. each other, yeah. and and, uh, yeah. and this is definitely just another example of we're going electric in all segments. Whether it's heavy truck, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's shipping, it's uh, personal vehicles, and if you combine this, with we haven't talked about this today, but. Uh, in terms of automation and so on in the future, if you add that to this, you can save costs, you know, make additional savings, of course, on fuels and so on, and even perhaps using the cabin of, of the drive today, with mm -hmm. using that with batteries and so on. Because the, the, electric, the electric engine is the, the core of the business, mm -hmm. and then you need a battery. Yeah. And from then on, it's, well, hydrogen fuel cells or pantographs coming from either direction. Mm -hmm. it's, you can add uh, electricity from any so any external source, basically. I just had one thing I thought was really interesting. Could you I read it, could you use the um, surplus uh, energy you might get from connecting uh, the pantograph uh, if, if if you have if you're already full in the battery in the in the truck, you can put that back into the grid. Technically, you no know, problem. Because that's also an interesting thing. Uh, if you could do that. Uh, you can also save money, or you can actually work with the power companies and so on. If you have, I mean, thousands of thousands of trucks, yeah. uh, and if you have uh, steep hills and so on, and you're going down, as you, if you have drive an electric car, you know that you're putting energy back into battery. Yeah. Uh, and you, you can only imagine with a heavy truck, uh, with that kind of mass, and with that kind of battery technology in the future, with many big batteries. Yeah, so the, the technology today can put the energy back into yeah. the system if you have excess energy from the truck. Yeah. So it puts it back in the system. Yeah. No problem. No. And with that, I would like to thank you for a really interesting day. And I re highly recommend people to, to check out um, the e-highway development, either uh, here in Sweden, of course, but also in, in what's happening in Germany. And in, if you're in the US, I recommend uh, checking out what's happening in the LA area uh, with that project. So with that, thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah.